Hello, everybody, and welcome to Exercise Your Rights, which used to be Exercise Your Rights over on my own channel. I started this little talk show back in January of 223 because I didn't have enough to do. Ha ha. Anyways, now here we are on episode 27, and today's guest is going to be Maxwell I. Gold talking about bleeding rainbows. I'm really excited. I did do the introduction for this book. Um, love this book. I love Maxwell as a person. He's a personal friend as well as a fellow trustee on the HWA board. I can't say enough good things about this guy, um, and I hope you enjoy hearing about his collection. Now, because this is new, if you would like to find out more information about how to be a guest, upcoming guests, just be sure to check out the HWA newsletter column of the same name, Exercise Your Rights, whoops, right there, um, which is by me, and I'll be talking about whatever guests are coming up for the next month and how you can be a guest and bios and book reviews and everything that happens on this show. And at the end of the show, stay tuned because I will have some submission opportunities for you. No, I won't. That's ridiculous. I'm not going to do that. I just realized. Well, maybe I will. I will have some submission opportunities for you. So I hope you enjoy this. Hi, Max. All right. I hope that wasn't too gushy. It could have been way gushier because I wanted to be like, I love him so much. <laughs> It could have been. It could have been a lot gush here. Okay. All right. We'll re-record that later and I'll be like, <laughs> he is the most amazing person. <laughs> I even have like a little hanky. It's adorable. <laughs> Anyways, welcome. I'm so proud to have you on here, especially like kind of this is a special show for me because this is the first show over here on the HWA YouTube channel, which is appropriate because you're treasurer of the HWA, a job that I know you cherish and love. <laughs> Um, you're long, long time member of the HWA, huge advocate of horror and the HWA and poetry. And these are all things I love. So, and here we have your book, Bleeding Rainbows, which I think is out and the link will be in the description by the time we're uh, everybody's seeing this. And uh, I'm really proud that I got to write the foreword for it because that was a huge honor because this is an amazing book. Well, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for having me. Thank you for, um, you know, it's really, it's, it's really exciting to be like one of the first, you know, our show or the first guest here. Um, and it was really, uh, you know, not, not, to, not, not to, not to gush myself, but you know, it was, it meant, it meant the world that you wrote the introduction for, um, for it. So. Oh, well, tell me a little bit about this book because obviously very few people have actually got to crack the cover on this at this point, uh, because it's a brand new, um, but this is a very not normal. Well, it is normal. It's an unexpected book. This is a vivid book. I'm going to say that this is vivid poetry. This is not going to be like, oh, a poetry collection and you're thumbing through it. This is a very exciting and uh, galvanizing. There's all these words that I want to put in here, a poetry book. So tell me how this happened, like, and your experiences in this, like, uh, so, so here's here's the paperback. Um, make sure I'm doing it on the right side of the screen. Here's the paperback of the book. Um, uh, the the um, the artwork is obviously very integral to um, um, to to the collection. Um, I, you know, had a conversation with Josh Viola from Hex Publishers last year. Uh, you know, we started talking about this book. You know, we wanted to do something together. Obviously, we wanted to do some sort of poetry collection together. Um, oh, look, there's the cover up there. Um, and, um, you know, obviously something cosmic and something, something different and something that was going to be unique. And then, you know, Josh kind of gave the idea. He was like, he was like, you know, why don't you do something, something erotic? And I was like, I was like, okay. Um, you know, that's, that just, that wasn't something that I really, 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 uh, tried before. And, um, and so then I thought to myself, well, why, why couldn't I make it, you know, um, erotic cosmic horror and that's kind of where that kind of kind of went down that path with um with with the book without trying to give too much too much away um but but the illustrations are are gorgeous they're um um they're um they're by a, a dutch artist named uh, martini um and there are seven illustrations and they um 
you know, they they um they complement each, you know, each poem tries to complement um the illustrations. I like the idea of <clears throat> erotic cosmic horror. I probably never told you about this, but the poem that I had in the Weird Tales, that was actually inspired by this collection. Oh, well, thank and you. it is erotic cosmic horror, though I didn't think of it. But as you said, I was like, that's a genre, folks. That's a genre now. And Maxwell started it. Um, I, I think that the whole thing is amazing. Um, and I love that because sex is kind of a cosmic experience, you know, that we talk about seeing stars and, you know, you go out of your mind and, and love is like that. And so it fits to me really, really well. But of course, some of the themes in your book are very dark. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, um, you know, I, it's obviously a gay, um, a, a gay, um, NSW, NSFW, you know, um, cosmic horror book. And I, you know, um, each each section is a different color and a different color with a different experience. Like um, the green section is um, called dragons and closets. You know, closets is uh, the 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 theme of a closet. You know, being a gay man is something that that um, uh, features heavily in a lot of my poems. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in a lot of my poems. So um, you know, just um, the you know just kind of the idea of that um, you know that that sort of uh, vast um like vast terrifying experience that you would have um just coming out of something that that has been a part of you for your entire life and trying to understand those expectations where you fit in them you know i just wanted to kind of expand on that in a um you know in, in a in a sort of intimate and terrifying manner and that's kind of where that you know that that kind of that kind of came from yeah well i think you very very much succeeded with that um, I know that the book is not safe for work, but could you show us the book? I mean, can we see? Because we can put, because we're doing a pre-record, we can put a little modesty tag over it. I don't know why I'm holding my hanky. Like, <laughs> it's not the hanky, right? <laughs> um, but, so yeah, we can do we'll... that. But yeah, the, the, the formatting is unique, very unique and colorful and amazing and well done. So Josh and I were very purposeful in terms of of like how the book was formatted. Uh, I give Josh all the credit for the formatting. He was brilliant. Um, you know, uh, in terms of the color, so I, I did not pick um, every, like I did not go with the traditional colors of the pride flag. Um, you know, the colors are, um, uh, the colors are red. Um, I'm looking at the book, make sure I remember all the colors. Uh, the colors are red, yellow, green, orange, um, purple, gray and black so um there were specific reasons for those colors you know red was kind of to symbolize this like desire yellow is a very unsettling color specifically in cosmic horror um you know yellow is 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 a color obviously you go back to the king in yellow um you know um or even back further in, in gothic gothic horror yellow has always been this sort of like um uh, has always been that sort of color so yellow in this particular book was kind of representative of like that and um, um yeah, like bile and stuff yeah but like uh like with um uh kinks and fetishes and kind of that that, mm. that aspect and then um uh green was the green section was hard we can talk about that later i suppose but the green section was um uh, toxic masculinity um orange was uh titled cycles over cycles and that was meant to be a little more like um uh, abusive relationships um, as well, kind of uh, like kind of tying back to toxic masculinity. Um, purple was uh, simply uh, like pleasure, um, and then uh, gray and black were kind of uh, more talking about um, you know the um, the the community itself, the struggles of the LGBT community, particularly gay men in the community. <clears throat> and black was kind of like where do we go from here? So, um, so we tried to, I don't know if you can see this, but we tried to kind of keep that, that throughout the book. I love that. Um, so, so yeah, we're trying to try to keep that throughout the whole, the whole book. Yeah. And how about, can you flip through it? I just want to show a little bit of the formatting and if, yeah, don't be afraid, um, everybody, we will edit this if anything pops up. Yeah. If something pops up, you'll, you so like, it obviously goes throughout the whole, sorry, uh, the whole is so cool i don't have depth perception i apologize um so as you can see like we wanted to make sure the top kind of got that got that color mm -hmm. um in there so 
Um, this one isn't that bad, but you know. Um, so. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that you ended on black. Well, black is obviously my favorite color, uh, but then you ended on a note of hope too. I mean, cause that's what I got out of the end of that is kind of more of a, a message. Hope isn't really the right word, but like, like our role in changing this, like our role going forward, I guess, is, is that kind of, is that a me thing or is that what you intended for that? Um, I, I, I guess the, um, you know, the, the uh part of it was was maybe a little hope but maybe a, maybe more more that like the work isn't done mm -hmm. like there like there, there, yeah. there's, more, there, there's more work to do yeah like a call to action section so yeah yeah i would if you're up for it i would love to hear some of this i would love it if you could read a poem or two uh yeah i mean not to put you on the spot or anything <laughs> So uh, I was going to read one uh, from the um, uh, green section. So the green section is, is um, okay, I don't, make sure I don't show the, um, the color. Well, we can edit it out, but um, you can kind of see the green, the green section is titled Dragons and Closets. So. Yeah. Um, and the art is amazing on this book. Uh, so the one I was going to read was titled um, uh, Adam, Adam the Tyrant, or You Could Do Better. Um, and also, this is the first time I've actually read some of these aloud. I've actually never read any of these aloud before. So Oh, that's awesome. Here <laughs> on this first show, I'm going to give you the whole screen for this. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> This is Adam the Tyrant. You could do better, he blasted, hands pressed against my face, flesh judgment strong but cruel. You could do better. Smells of toothpaste and beer filled my nostrils as he turned me over, my body like meat. You could do better. Bruises, blood, and flesh spectrums painted my body like some unholy, insecure canvas like it was a game, a silly, fucked up game. You could do better. Friends, family, and strangers warned. Too late, though, when angry hands found me, my throat, my ribs. You could do better, I told myself. Too scared to leave, to run away from the tyrant who knew everything, as if the stars, too, were afraid of his wrath. And you could do better, when there was no difference between laughter and tears, and myself began to fade into him. You could do better. Choices were no longer my own. The dark machinations of his sinister lust, thinly veiled hallucinations of love. You could do better. Too late were my dark compunctions and tyrants must fall. You could do better, I realized, when blood, lust, and flesh became my erotic nightmare. And I knew then, tyrants must fall. You could do better. I love it. That's the thing about this. One of the reasons why I love this book so much is because it is a, it's your experience. It's, it's a gay man's experience. And I'm obviously not a gay man last time I looked, but it's a universal experience. You know, that feeling of, 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 of that conflict of, of you not ever being enough of, of the person, not you, I'm not pointing at you because you are enough Max. Uh, but you know, that feeling of inadequacy, I think we've all shared and I don't care what hierarchy we're in, you know, and sometimes I think that feeling is the problem, you know, mm -hmm. why we turn out to be jerks sometimes. Yeah. And it's, it's you know, some, and I, I will say just for, just for the sake of, of, of the book, these names were exaggerated. They are not, they're not, they're not real people. Um, okay. Yeah. So everybody who's just going to go out there and pick on an Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. It's okay. It was just a fake name. So, um, well, what were some of the, I mean, obviously I think there had to be challenges writing this. This is a very raw, visceral, truthful book. What were some of the challenges that, and, and don't overshare if you don't feel like it. I don't want to like make you relive some of this. Uh, you know, some, I, you know, I think some of it was just, um, you know, trying to figure out how to like, how how to, um, 
trying to figure out the best way to um, uh, the best way to articulate trauma. I, from from my from from my own experience. I mean, it's obviously you know it's yeah. Yeah, because you there's the balance between you don't want to glorify it, yeah, but you don't want to, you know. Obviously, there's victims here, but you don't want to like continue that either. So it would be like a delicate balance between that. Yeah. So I mean, it you know it was, and honestly, some of it was therapeutic, just kind of get just getting it, just getting it out there. Mm -hmm. Do you? This is just out of my own curiosity. Do you ever wish? Um, do you have the, the the urge to like send your book to anybody in particular? Like, ha, look at this, <laughs> you jerk, <laughs> or anything like that? No. no. Okay. I do, but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> well, you can. You can send them the book. That's fine. I'm, I'm going to send your book to everybody. So if you get a copy of the book from me, it's not that I'm saying you're a jerk, okay? It also can be saying that I love you and I'm giving you this book. <laughs> so you decide when you get the copy from me. I want to talk a little bit about Pride Month because you wrote, wrote an essay recently um, and it was about the origins of Pride Month and it really gave me a new perspective on it because I've kind of, Pride Month is a very celebratory, happy month, you know, is the way I've always thought of it. And you had such a, I mean, it's still a celebratory and happy month, but you really brought down the reasons why we have Pride Month in that essay. And I I really want to make sure since this is the beginning of Pride Month for us on this show that we share that that perspective. Yeah, I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things, I am, you know, I I am I I am I, you know, I am a you know, a young gay man who did not experience, you know, any of these things and have the luxury of growing up in a world where those who came before me were able to fight and and uh, fight and be killed and you know and, and, and survive things that were much, um, much more terrible than I could ever imagine. So that, so that we could be sitting here and having these conversations right now. Um, you know, so I think part of, part of the reason why I made the introduction so, um, not gloomy, but so, so realistic is because that is the history of, of the, um, LGBT civil rights movement is that, um, you know, there were, um, trans women and drag queens that were beaten and blasted with water cannons during the Stonewall riots. And, um, that was the beginning of, uh, you know, it's that, which is a which is a lot of people just assume it was gay men during Stonewall riots. It was mostly women in trans and trans women and uh, drag queens during, um, you know, during, uh, the first, um, the, during the beginning of the Stonewall, Stonewall riots. Um, and I wanted to talk about that, um, also because, you know, like, like there was a certain period where we just forgot, like we and the LGBT, I say we, but like in the LGBT community, we just, you know, celebrated and just kind of forgot that, no, that this was a movement. This is a movement to have our rights and to, um, you know, make sure that we are still heard. And there are, you know, I'm not trying to make this a, a political thing right now or, or anything like that. I mean, there, there are, there are individuals and groups and political parties that think we don't have the right to be who we are. And they are, you know, so part of, part of that, um, part of that introduction was meant to sort of remind everybody that, you know, pride is a celebration, but it's also a, um, it's, it's, it's also a movement to continue LGBT civil rights. Mm. Uh, because there are people that think that we should not have those rights. Yeah. Yeah. And well, and that's kind of what I feel about your book is it's a book. And, and now I'm flipping back to the book again, but this ties together because your book is kind of, to me, it, it's like a champion book. It's like a call to action. It's championing this cause. Uh, but for, for everybody, for like this oppression in general, like, you know, this kind of, you not being free to be who you are, whoever that is, without judgment. And so I think that's why I love the essay so much, um, because I didn't know all that. You know, that's, you know, I could tell you a bunch of stuff about Okinawa and things like that, but I can't tell you anything about that. 
So it's important for us to share these these stories together. Yeah, I mean, because uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you know, if we if not to try and quote um, Maimonides, but you know, if I'm not for myself, who am, who you know who am I or was if I'm not for myself, um, who would be for me? If not now, when? So I mean, um, mm -hmm. that's kind of that's that's kind of where that. Um, that's kind of where that 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 comes from, and I and I suppose that you know to to talk a little bit more about the book, I um that's kind of where the like that's kind of the the subtle meaning of the triangle. So like you'll notice on the cover, um sorry I can't find my camera. Um you'll notice on on the cover there's a triangle, and in each um uh since we're gonna use the uh um, like in each um illustration, like each each person has um we'll we'll um we'll, we'll edit that out anyway um, <laughs> we just see what they have yes i noticed that. Um, everyone has a triangle on them so the triangle is meant to be representative of of the pink triangle that the um the germans used uh during world war ii um to identify um uh men uh homosexual pris prisoners basically um and war criminals and anything like that. So I, the, that that triangle was eventually reclaimed and then used as a as a um, uh, a symbol for 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 LGBT LGBT civil rights. So that's awesome because I didn't know that either until this book until you explained that. So oh, very cool. Um, I'm excited for all of this. I'm excited to see what happens with this book. How do you think? Um, I mean, because this is now for the HWA, how do you feel the HWA, um, this, I feel like this is a loaded question, uh, supports, like, do you think that we support in the horror community? Um, yeah, I think the, I think, I think the HWA does a, a fantastic job supporting, um, you know, um, not just gay, but, you know, all members of the mm -hmm. LGBT community, um, yeah. you know, like the pride, the pride interview, the point of pride um series that the hwa does is is um is is also a nice um uh and a, a, a nice outlet uh, as well to kind of show show our support um but yeah, yeah i think overall the hwa does a fantastic job supporting the lgbt community i agree um i apologize the reason why i was laughing so much is like that was such a question of like obviously we're both trustees <laughs> of the board so like do you think the HWA does a good job, Max? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's a loaded question, so I apologize. But I, I do, I feel like we do a lot for our community, recognizing all the different aspects of our community, um, our horror community. So I'm, I'm really proud of us as an organization. Uh, it might show just a little bit. <laughs> well, tell us where we're going to be able to find Bleeding Rainbows. Um, I know Hex Publishers came out with it. And they have done an amazing job. Um, so probably their website, but where are all the other, and what do you guys have planned for it? So uh, I will be doing a release party like locally um, uh, in Columbus, Ohio. So, um, uh, and in terms of finding the book, you can find the book uh, through Hex, through, through Hex, pre-orders pre are still available. Um, we'll make sure I put all those links and everything. Um, it will be. It will come in paperback and hardback. Um, I will show the hardback real quick because it's very nice. Make sure I find the camera at the right time. So the hardback is very nice. It also has the same, you know, the same, uh, the same detailing that That's we tried gorgeous. to get in the formatting as well. So um, it'll come paperback and hardback, and you can get it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, you know, all the all the major sites um, as well. Is there um, like a special gift or anything that you get by pre-ordering? Um, there is for the hardback. Um, I I will um, I would not be able to share those on this interview, but um, you will receive if you order if you pre-order the hardback, you will receive a very special NSFW bookmark. That's all I will say. I feel like a fifth grade boy over here because I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome. I'm just going to say pretty awesome. And I definitely need to catch them all. I need that entire collection. They are color coded. Yes. 
Yeah. So, well, what, all right. So now switching over to, I want you to read one more poem before we go. And then I also want to find out what other things you're doing because you are everywhere right now. So definitely read another poem, but then we need to find out all the places where we can find you besides bleeding rainbows. All right. Um, let's see. I All right. I think I'm going to read a, one from uh one from uh, the orange section. The orange section and the in the green sections were probably um the um probably the hardest sections for me to to work on. Um, just because those are probably the darkest sections in, in, uh, in the book. Um, yeah. And you referred I mean, to that, to the green section earlier. So I'm going to ask you after you read, I'm going to ask you about that. Actually, I'm going to read another one from the green section. Uh, so again, disclaimer, these were, the, these names were pulled, um, <clears throat> In the green section, everyone has a name. Most of them have a name. Like, you know, like Adam the Tyrant, etc. Um, so this one is titled Sean the Leviathan. Sorry. Thick and heavy were his thoughts, which pulled me down like a monster from the sea. Compelled I was to drink from the salty oceans provided by his anger and love, despite the dread and dumbbell nightmares which clashed in my mind every night. Every day, every day he grew with vile, manipulative, blood-stroke mania as if another ship were swallowed through his wide, terrible jaws. Still, closer, I found myself pressed into the tight sweats pulled across a grotesque mass where vascular flesh stars dotted the all-too-familiar horizon. I was running out of time. He craves the meat those before me said, familiar with the monster, who tried too late to warn, too late they were helplessly devoured. Set one, press two, until rolled into that ruthless existence, which was Sean. I love it. What You did allude earlier to the green section um, being the most difficult, and we were going to come to that. And then we, we haven't, I haven't asked that question. So can you, like, before we go, I do want to hear about that. So some of, so some of these are, some of these poems, you know, were representative of experience, I, experiences I, I may have had or have had at, at, at some point in my, in my life, you know, I've seen it now, but like before, um, and um, you know, I it was I I had wondered like initially when like Josh and I talked about this collection, I had wondered like like I didn't know how to write something. Well, I mean, it's not that I didn't know how to write something erotic. I I wanted to find a way to make it meaningful and personal and um. Uh, and, you know, like I said, the, these, uh, you know, s some of these things, you know, some of these things happen to me. Um, and, um, you know, it's not something I talk about. So the only way to talk about it was, you know, through these unimaginable, you know, like bro gods and jock queens and, you know, you know, nameless, nameless things. That's awesome. And that's like the power of poetry right there is like being able to tell the truth without telling the truth. So you can, un we can unburden, but not reveal ourselves or reveal isn't the word, right word. You know what I'm trying to say though? Yeah. Like be exposed, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, I love that you did this. I love everything about this book. I actually feel genuinely a little teary-eyed, which is weird for me because 
I, I, I do know how hard this was to write and I'm just incredibly proud of you writing it um, because I know it wasn't easy, like the whole experience. And I'm proud for what it represents, um, not to just a particular community, but for everybody in general. You know, it is very much, to me, I take it as like a book of kind of like, this is the way it is. This is a thing and it can be elevated. Like we survived it and we can move on. And I think of the, the prism on the front of the book is like meaningful for me because it's like light comes in one way and then it splinters and we can see all the colors, but we can't mm. see them with our naked eye. We need that, that fracturing to make them apparent. And so that's kind of what I see this book as is a life that has some fracturing light and you know, many of us have this fracturing, but then look what comes out on the other side is this mm -hmm. amazing creation. So, yeah, so super well done. Everybody go get this book. I mean, you have to get this book. And I just want to say as books are being banned everywhere, this is a great gift to give to anybody on your list. Librarians, <laughs> teachers, hide them in the library, maybe not in the kids section, but, you know, go reshelve this on the bookshelf, you know, give a gift of freedom of speech. So not to be political over here. And then they're like, oh, the show's canceled, sorry. Right. <laughs> but well now let's finish up because we are out of time. And I just want to find out from you, like Maxwell I. Gold, where are you going to be next? I feel like this is going to be another half an hour because you're everywhere right now, everywhere I look you're either in the table of contents or you're getting ready to do something. So. Well, I'll have, I'll, I'll have, uh, <laughs> I'll have um, a few poems coming out in some, in a, a few anthologies um, this year, um, uh, including one with, uh, um, uh, including one with, with, um, I, I believe with, with, with you, with um, uh, Omni Park too, is, uh, is, is uh, coming Oh, yes. Um, yes. So I don't know when that's coming out, but I think it's soon. But yeah. um, I actually have a chapbook of prose poems coming out in November from in Interstellar Flight Press. That's actually another, you know, uh, another, um, uh, there are queer myths and other myths. Um, that's called- Another um, amazing cover too. It's actually, and it's actually called an, another, like in an, another mythology. Um, uh, and then I have a, uh, another prose poetry collection coming out next year. Um, it has not been officially, it's everything signed, it has not, it has not been officially announced yet, so, but um, I will announce it soon. Awesome. Well, I'm super excited. And and in a way, Omni Part 2, my story is also your story, because I did the prequel, 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 to your story from Omni Park 1, because you have a story in Omni Park 1. Yeah. That I can't remember the name of now. What is like it's water? The fisherman's last call. Yeah, the fisherman's last call. And so then I can't remember what mine is now, but mine is a prequel to yours. So no, that's exciting. So it, that's cool. In that's a way, cool. that's like being in there twice. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the show. It's a real pleasure and an honor to have you. I wish you the best of luck with Bleeding Rainbows. Um, phenomenal collection. You're a phenomenal person and a phenomenal force of good for the HWA in general. And thank you for all you do for the HWA. So, and now we'll close out with this video, but I just want to thank everybody for being here and we'll be back next Saturday with another guest who I don't even know that who that is right now. So let me look because yeah, totally prepared. Alex Davis, um, who did the UK ghost hunting festival last year. And so we're going to talk about the ghost hunting festival that they're doing for this year and all of that kind of stuff. So that That's will cool. be, yeah. And then we're going to be talking to Harold Hull on the mentorship experience, because of course, HWA is known for its mentorship program. So, sign up, sign up if you yeah. have, well, I don't know if it's open right now, but sign up. <laughs> yeah, sign up if it's open. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so we'll catch you guys on those next Saturdays. You will be back, Max, because we're friends, so you have to be, because <laughs> I love having you on. And otherwise, I will see everybody next Saturday. Uh, so, you know, I guess this is a good time to have like one of those sign-offs, so I'm going to make one up. Stay horrible. <laughs> and now it is time for some submission opportunities.
Right now, I want to highlight Off Limits Press, uh, who is open to submissions until June 30th for their new anthology, Make Your Presence Known, Stories of Seances, Conjuring, and Mediumship. So they pay four cents a word, and they're looking for 1,500 to 5,000 word short fiction stories on spiritualism, contact, Ouija boards, spirit conjuring, and more. And they also accept reprints. So link in the description. Go ahead and look for that. The other submission that I want to share, like really I tried to just share one, but I love both of these. But the other one I'm going to share is, or I guess highlight, is a siren's call publications are seeking alien horror with at least one human and one alien involved from 2000 to 3000 words payment is a flat rate of $15 per story the best story receives a $50 bonus that submission closes June 30th so i hope you will go submit to these i hope this was some good information for you and on my other show, I'm covering a lot more of these things every week on Opportunity Knocks. And I hope you enjoyed this show. Check it out in the newsletter. Find out who's coming next. And thank you. Bye-bye.